as we begin our reflection today on the ninth station, let us first pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and eternal Father, accept our prayer of thanksgiving for your beloved Son, our Savior and Lord. As we recall his sacred passion, send the Spirit of Christ into our hearts, we beg you, so that whether we pray or work, we might do all in union with Christ our Redeemer. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The ninth station, Jesus falls a third time. What can we learn from this third fall that we haven't already looked at from the other two? Well, the first thing we can state is that Jesus falls a third time. Now, that may not seem important, but it is. He's exhausted. And that moves us into our reflection about this station. If I were to ask you, and I will, describe your cross. We speak about it in the church often. Carry your cross. Carry your cross daily. Jesus says that. Pick up your cross and follow after me. So describe it. How big is it? What does it look like? How much does it weigh? I'm sure if you're like me, you can't come up with a design with a weight or a height. You can't say how big or how small it is because it's invisible. We don't know. We can look at certain situations, certain weaknesses, certain individuals and say all these things participate in the cross. They are maybe splinters in the cross as a whole, but how big my cross is, I don't know. And as I get older, the weight of it starts to become something that I, too, feel exhaustion from. Jesus fell a third time. He's exhausted. He's been up a long time. He's been carrying this weight a long time. As we get older, we, too, become exhausted with carrying our cross in a Christ-like way. Because one, we don't know what our cross is. We can't put a picture to it or place a name upon it. All we know we have to uh, do is carry it. And that gets tiring. And that gets frustrating. Because we look back on our life, and I'm sure... If you're like me, you look back and you see all the failed times, the missed opportunities, the rejections of the cross that we are asked to carry, to participate in. And we look today as we wake up and we think, oh, it's another day. Another day to carry my cross. Oh, God, when will it end? I am sure that a person who has a long-standing illness, there are days when they wake up and think, oh God, not another day. It's too much. When will it finally end? I'm tired of doing this. We can all feel that way. But we persevere. And that's the true aspect of the cross on this, the third station, is that when I persevere, I start to understand the words of Jesus. When Jesus told his disciples to follow after him, they have to take up their cross and carry it daily. 
He did not put a caveat to it by saying, oh, and by the way, as you get older, you'll start to understand it better. It will melt away. It will get lighter. He didn't say any of that. He just said, carry it. Does it get lighter? Technically, it does because we start to see things differently. Not that it's lighter in its weight, but that I appreciate it more. Because through the cross, I start to see other individuals through the eyes of Christ, that they are valuable that they're worth it. And therefore, I persevere. Using my imagination, let us say this, that when Jesus fell that third time, as he's lying there in the dirt, the dust of Jerusalem, Could he, imagination here, could he have looked up in that moment of exhaustion and saw your face in the crowd, my face? Could that have been the thing, our face, that he said, it's worth it, it's worth it. My love for you makes it worth it. You're that valuable to me. And therefore, I will use what little strength I have left to get back up and continue. That's how the, com the cross starts to become lighter, per se, as I start to see it as valuable and allowing me to see others as valuable worth it. They mean a lot to me. And therefore, I persevere. I look at the past. I see my failures, my rejections. And I'm not discouraged because Christ himself fell two times prior. But he got back up. So I Get back up because the people I love are worth it. And even though I am tired, I am exhausted as him. Even though my the glories of carrying the cross, the merits of carrying the cross, the things that might have inspired me when I was young and naive, they're not there anymore. The reality of my exhaustion that's there. That's all I'm left with. I'm tired. But I see those around me. They're the reason why I get back up. And I continue on. That's what we can learn from this, the third fall of Jesus. That you and I are worth it. His love for us is so great and so powerful. He sees us as worth it, as valuable, as dear, as precious, whatever word you want to use. And therefore, he gets back up and continues on. Please, don't give in to the exhaustion. Don't give in to despair. Don't give in to the thought of when will it end. Get back up every time you fall. Go to him. Ask him, Lord, forgive me. 
confess your sins and say, Lord, give me the strength to put one more foot in front of the other and to continue on. I have to tell you, there's an old movie, The Agony and the Ecstasy. It's about the relationship between Pope Julius the second, I believe, and Michelangelo in the painting of this ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. Famous, famous dialogue between them. Pope Julius II keeps asking, when will you make an end? Which is the same question we ask of God. When will you make an end? And what does Michelangelo always respond with when I am finished? That's the same thing for us in the cross. When, Lord, when will you make it end? When it is finished. But until that time comes, get back up and carry it. May Almighty God be with you. May he bless you the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.